G'day YouTube, my name's Lance, welcome to Bundy Bear's Shed. Well the weather report, look it's nice and sunny, um, there is cloud coming over that's making the shed creak, like the, the cloud comes over and the, the shed contracts a little bit and you hear a quick snap, crackle, pop and that's that time of year when it does that and um, yeah the cloud disappears and the sun comes out and the shed heats up again and snap, crackle and pop once more. And um, but they reckon 17 to 23 today. <coughs> I mean, so that's not bad. Um, I reckon I reckon it'll get more than 23, like it was 30 yesterday. And um, yeah, I think it'll get up a bit higher than what they're thinking. So anyway, we'll see how we go. Um, yeah, haven't had much of a much of a home um, week this week with selling the shop. Um, yeah, I got the Monday and. Tuesday might have been. <coughs> oh man, I got a couple of days at home early in the week, but that was just doing stew and trying to sort parts still, which is a major, major thing. And um, yeah, the rest of the time I'd, I'd go into the shop and um, you know try and help with whatever's going on in there, as in um, you know train the new people and make sure you don't realise how many accounts a business has got until. You got to contact them all, and they um, they got to come back and um, you know with applications for credit and um, the Capricorn Society that we're in, um, yeah, you know, reapplying for that and talking to the fellow about the benefits for that and and um, the the and I suppose, <coughs> pardon me, the Capricorn is a um, buying group that we've been in for many many years, and um, anyway, we're selling the shop. We thought we might have had to get out of it, but. Um, because we're keeping Bundy Bear's shed going and I'm going to try and restore a few tractors and I'm going to restore them for show, I'm going to restore them for sale, I'm just, just going to enjoy myself, you know, whatever whatever spins the wheels of the day. <coughs> oh, a bit of asthma coming in. Um, yeah, so whatever happens there, but they're going to keep the account going for us. So what that means is when we're travelling around Australia, mucking around, um, if we ever need a car part or anything like that, well, we don't have to apply for an account or anything like that or give credit card details over the phone. We can just say, oh, you know, Bundy Bears Shed, um, Capricorn account number, blip, and um, book it straight to our account. And when we get home, or well, you know, we can deal with that account when it comes in. Um, and the benefit is that you normally you get a fairly good trade discount on items as well. So. Um, so if you're travelling around, you can get a reasonable trade and um, go from there. So that's staying going. Um, <coughs> we've got to sort insurances out. Like, we just paid the insurance in the business in July. And um, like just the public liability, and that's about 8000 bucks. And um, we'd paid that, but it's August, September, October, end of October. Um, so about a third of the year, but... We can't transfer that across because we're all different people, see, and the, the new owners have to sort their own business insurance out. So um, I've got to try and deal with that this week sometime. See, see if they, they might give me a big refund. Hey, woohoo! Straight, straight to the bottle shop. No, but Uncle Bob's. Yeah, <laughs> we have Dan Murphy's in Australia. It's a, it's a, oh, it's owned by Woolies or Coles or one of those fellas, and um, everyone says Uncle Dan, but we got Bob's Bulk Booze. You know, I'm on the highway near Toy World opposite Macca's and um, I like going in there. A, at the moment, I, I sort of change a little bit, but um, yeah, Bob's Bulk Booze, that seems to be... You put an app on your phone and they send you little specials and... Um, they never send specials on stuff I want, but <laughs> anyway, that's how it goes. Um, so anyway, yeah, it's... Um, there's, there's not a lot of shed work going on, but there's a, there's a fair bit of behind the scenes stuff going on with the sale of the business. So um, 30th, no, 30th of October will be our last day and 1st of November, Friday the 1st of November will be, um, be Dean's and his family's new um, takeover. So they'll be there for one day and then they can go and fiddle around all weekend if they like. <laughs> and um, Judy and I are gonna make ourselves available. Um, like the first day they do the pays and. Um, they, they're coming in now to see how Judy does the pays, but um, on the Zero, which is our accounting software, they've got to set theirs up and transfer our accounts, you know, what we thought we needed for the business across into the new one and do the pays and, 
Um, we've got to get the staff to sign transfers that they're happy for us to keep all their long service in place that Judy and I pay for and then transfer it to a new ABN holder and oh there's some bullshit a lot of stuff we'd never thought of but anyway we just got to soldier through and, and work along and um, yeah there's light at the end of the tunnel so um, some of the stuff I do at home here for the business which is um, making the the petrol Ferguson governor rods you know the balls and all that you can't buy them so I make them here um, I've made a couple of the secret tubes inside the 23C head. Now, look, I've, I've, never, I've never made them for sale. Um, I've always just done a couple for myself, but I've never done a run of them for sale. But um, Dean that's bought the business and his dad, his dad's handy, and um, he's got a lathe and loves machining and things like that by all accounts. And I sort of, I think I might know him, but I can't remember. Years ago, I reckon I was out there working on their tractor one time. But anyway, perhaps I was, perhaps it might have been his brother. Um, but yeah, he likes machining and um, yeah, and that sort of stuff. He just loves it. Um, so um, I've got Dean and his dad coming here this afternoon and we're going to run through what I make here personally, how I go about it. Um, is it a good saleable item? Is it a, um, see, some things you make for the business you will sell one or two and it's more of a service just so you've got a complete range of tractor parts and you're not going to sell a hundred of everything you ever make it's um you know i've got items that i've made that we've sold four or four of them you know I'm, I'm way behind i've got stock of them and um but you can't buy them anywhere else and we do sell the odd one but um then it's up to us to make sure they're on the website so so dean and his dad are coming out the sarve for a look um, I'm going to try and run them through what I'm doing here, um, how I do it, um, yeah, what parts I make that are profitable, what parts I make as a community service more than anything. You do sell them, but you, you don't make money. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, if you sold them for what your time was, um, you'd go backwards. So anyway, it doesn't matter. It's all part of the package. Hopefully, if someone's buying 10 or a dozen parts off you... Um, They'll chuck one of them in the in the basket, and away they'll go. So, um, so yeah, that'll be interesting to solve. Um, yeah, sorting that out. Um, I still haven't got the pressure cleaner back together where I had the leaky fuel tank. The fuel tank's fixed. That's the first job this morning, and I'm hoping I've got a couple of cardboard boxes around the floor here with parts on them. I'm hoping to lift them all up and do the pressure clean out again. Um, it's been about three weeks since I've done a three, maybe even four since I've done a pressure clean. And I'm, um, I'm trying to make sure I'm staying with it um, to try and keep it clean. My little walk around broom's good. Um, the kids seem to like it. They come and they whiz around and sweep the floor. But at the moment, it's not dirt in here from me working or doing anything like that because I haven't been doing much. But it's leaves. The other day, oh, the bloody wind would have been yesterday... Yeah, Sunday, Saturday, this weekend, holy dooly. And um, the doors out the front were banging, so I went out and put wedges in them. And um, yeah, it was a lot of breeze. And I noticed this morning, I've got gum leaves everywhere. So I suppose that's part of living in the bush, isn't it? Um, living with trees around, it's nice to have the trees around, but they can be a bit of a nuisance sometimes. So, um, so this morning, I'm gonna um, make sure I tidy the place up a little bit. Um, just, just to keep doing the housework. <laughs> it's, it's one of those things, when you're a shed bloke, it's just so easy to walk in the shed, sit down and start playing with your hobby and um, not do the housework. And then at the end of the day, you're feeling buggered and you think, oh, time to go up and have a beer or something like that. So you pack up and just go up and you don't, you don't do all your housework properly. And I'm guilty of it, that's for sure. So... Um, so I'm, I'm really trying to stay on top of it and the place is slowly getting better and better and tidier and tidier, but there's still an awful long way to go. The flow meter project is pretty well done. Um, my old gauges that I mentioned last week that needed new glasses, well, Plasma Dave, um, he follows the channel um, and he, he comments every video pretty well. Um, he showed, sent me a photo the other day, I sent him the measurements and he offered to cut them out of acrylic for me, three mil acrylic. And um, he sent me a photo the other day, so they're done. And um, 
And I was talking to him, I said, oh, well, why don't you do a video? He's got a YouTube channel called Plasma Dave. And um, yeah, I said, why don't, why don't you do a video of it? Um, just cutting them out, how you do it. Then I can tie that in with fitting them sort of thing. And yeah, just a collaborative sort of thing. So um, we'll see if he's doing a video. I think, well, it makes sense. And then I can, um, even in this description, I'll try and put a link to Dave's channel there so you can go and have a look. And he's been working on Land Rovers. God, why would you work on a bloody Land Rover? Um, <laughs> but the thing is, with his working on the Land Rover, I do notice the plastic in those things. Um, like he's just replaced an inlet manifold. And yeah, it looks like it, where, the, where the two bits of plastic have blow moulded or whatever they, however they do them, it's split there. But that's the way the world's going, isn't it? John Deere tractors. They're all plastic, plastic mud guards, plastic side grills, plastic every bloody thing. And a 10 year old John Deere nowadays, you look in the cab and there's bits hanging off and there's bloody, there's um, foam coming off and all sorts of things. But you hop in an old, an old John Deere 4040 or something like that. And well, they used to have the problem with the, with the foam coming off inside the cabs, but all the plastic will be good because the only plastic's inside the cabin on the top, there's no plastic outside. Um, oh, there might be a bit round where the, where the lights go, but yeah. So anyway, that's how cars are going, I suppose. On my cruiser out there, most of it's um, alloy, but um, oh, there'll be plastic there, you can bet on that. But anyway, <laughs> um, so yeah, the old gauges, they all seem to work. I haven't calibrated them or mucked around with them yet, um, but when Dave gets the, um, gets the glasses to me, we'll assemble them and have a look. Um, I was watching a bloke the other day on YouTube, and I, I can't even think of his name now. And he he restored a gauge for an old car, and he and he he restored the face, like inside where the numbers were and the lettering and all that. And um, yeah, I'm not sure how you'd do that. What you would, yeah, you know, you'd nearly have to make it out of a vinyl or something like that, because I think the paper. Um, you know, I wonder what they did years ago. I suppose. I suppose in this day and age, if you could get the pattern, you could you could paint the disc white, and then you know the laser would burn all the little marks and the letters and the numbers and all for you. But anyway, I got, and the only reason I'm saying that is I have one gauge over there, and it looks like the face is coming off, like the the glass came off, but the face. And I went to give it a wipe, and you can see it's it's like a sheet of paint that's ready to come off. You know, from the when you've used paint stripper. So um, anyway, we'll see. See, um, I might do it, I might not bother. I've got, I've got the whole thing set up now. I've, I've glued everything in, the other old, the inline flow meter, I've glued all that together. Um, it's going good. Now my old mate, um, I've showed you this plate before. And this is a plate that old Bill Hare had when he was doing his field service work. And you could put a hydraulic pump in a tractor, probably 100 series, I'd imagine. And um, so that would have to line up something like that, I'd say. And the front would be out there. And um, with that bolt hole there. Anyway, um, and yeah, this had a fitting on it. And this fitting, you could, you could put this plate on. And because there's no other hole in the plate here and there's an O-ring there, well, that would blank this off, and after you fitted a pump or something like that, you can pop this plate on, you can pop the pressure gauge on, test, well, you, you, could, you could test flow, and you could test pressure. So your normal standpipe would come up through the middle there, that's why there's a big, big block here, and the standpipe would come there. And so before you went to the trouble of putting the top back on, you could... Um, you could pressure test and flow test that pump that you've probably just put in or, or repaired in some way. So um, I was looking at that the other day and I thought, well, that's fair enough, but I'd like to do that without pulling the top cover off. And um, so when you have a tractor, like a, say the Massey Ferguson 20 that I did the hydraulics on, um, I'd like to, a plate that when you bought a tractor and you brought it home here, and you thought, I wonder how that hydraulic pump's going, and you know it's supposed to flow, let's say, six gallons a minute or something like that. Um, how do you test that without getting the top cover off and flow testing the pump and all that? So what I've made 
is this. So this is another one of those, like all of you will recognise that, that top cover, and there's where your standpipe goes. And what I've done there, I've, I've tapped and put a grub screw in there. And so I've blanked this off. So what happens normally, the oil comes from the pump up the standpipe, then it comes across inside this drilling, and it comes out here, and it goes to the lift cylinder. So what I've done there is by blanking that off, the oil comes from the standpipe out through here. I can hook my flow meter to it, put it back into the back end, and um, I'll probably make a, a 3 8 fitting that just screws into the side of your lift cover there so you can put it back in because if you, um, I suppose you could have the side cover off you know, and pour the oil back in there, but if you pour the oil in next to the gear stick, the return oil, the gearbox will end up filling up. Well, I know on the early tractors, maybe it does on the others, I haven't looked. Um, but yeah, if you put it in at the gear stick there, um, it mightn't get back quick enough, I don't know. But So what I can do with this now is um, I can buy a tractor or use, say, the Massey 20 or the 135 or whatever. I can undo the plate, take the standard one off, put this one on, hook the flow meter up, and I can do a couple of things. One, the flow, I can, I can close the flow meter off and let the pressure in the system build and let it build, a, you know, if it has to be tested at 1,500 pounds per square inch, what flow you have. So I can tell it, you know, if, if we only got four gallons per minute, well, I can tell that the pump's down about 30%. And um, yeah, it's, it's working, but it's no good. Um, and I can also turn the tap right off and I can check the relief pressure of the tractor, what the, what the pump relief valve is set at. So, and uh, oh, Bill got me thinking about it. With this here, I, I always looked at this plate and thought, what a great idea, you know, you can actually test the pump's work and not have to put the lift cover all the way back on and um, in the past, all I've done is I've, I've run the tractor with the standpipe in or, you know, just make sure the pump works and move the valve by hand, but you're putting your fingers in where things are turning and things like that. So this is a great idea. Um, yeah, the, the pump will just be in full, full pump mode, so you can pressure test that before you put the top on. But, and that got me thinking about doing this one. So this is gonna go in the flow, in the test kit, in the flow meter test kit. And um, I've got 7, 8 JIC there. Um, because I went to the half inch hose, I'm dropping to 7, 8 JIC with every fitting now. And um, what's not JIC will be quick release. So yeah, that's just something I come up with just as a, um, as a quick way of testing the pump pressure. Um, and look, uh, there is other ways of doing it. Don't think it's the only way. Um, on the on the lift cover of a tractor, um, where this goes, where this bolts on and where the oil goes to the, to the lift cylinder, um, the, there is a drilling in there and I'll try and point it out on the 65 or something shortly. And there's 3.8 BSP plug in there. And you could just pull that plug out, screw a fitting in and do it like that. But I, I don't know, I chose to do it like this. I just thought, well, you know, I, I just, I don't know, just how I chose to do it. Yeah, <laughs> so, <coughs> so yeah, I, I could have, to, for the flow meter, I could have a BSP male nipple on a JIC and that would go into the side there. I would still get the pressure readings and all that sort of thing, but um, these O-rings here, you'd be, you'd be pressurising those O-rings, which, you know, it's got to have pressure to work anyway. But, um, so th this isn't the only way of doing it. You, you can just screw a plug in there um, and do a test with what you have there, but I, I chose to do this. And, um, the, um, the other stuff at the bench here, you can see I've got a little slug of steel here. I'm gonna lift that up because way too bloody heavy. So that's 140 millimetres by, oh geez, it'd have to be, Oh, what's that? By 130 high. So 140 OD, I think. Thereabouts, yeah, 140 OD. 
130 in height. And you can see the bowl for the John Deere here. Now, this is the transmission filter bowl. So it's under the right hand foot plate of your tractor. And this is where you have a, this is an old dinged up filter. Look, that's how you get parts sometimes with Australia Postnet. So this has a filter in it. And what happens is the oil comes out of your, trans, through your suction screen, up to your transmission pump, back down to the outside of this filter here. Then it goes through the filter, comes inside and goes back to your high, low PDO, PDO brake um, and lube and the return oil actually goes up as charge pressure to your main front hydraulic pump. Now, when we had the workshop, um, John Deere were my bread and butter. I sort of knew them inside out. And um, there is a test fitting there that you can um, replicate this and the filter and it just goes straight up and see on the John Deere's, if that transmission pump's not working, you won't have your high low will slip, your PDO can slip, there's not enough oil left to go to the front pump so you go to lift your hydraulics and they get jerky on the way up and things like that. So um, John Deere had this fitting and it was just a big round fitting um, with a step in it to replicate the filter and on the bottom here it had a had a, a port here and a port near the middle going in the middle and what you could do you could just pop this housing up put the o-ring on and flow test your transmission pump and so you would know right away whether your transmission pump was working well then if your transmission pump was working well well then you can check your low system pressure which is 150 pounds say and put a gauge in the side and um, put your high low on high low off pdo on pdo off and things like that so when i sold the business years ago um, i sold that fitting with it well i have a 2030 in pieces i have a 1640 and while i'm working on the flow meter i've always had this bit of steel there to make one so um, i've drawn up a little a little a little drawing <laughs> that won't mean shit to you but anyway i understand it and um, so what it is, it's about a 30 mil thick plate with a 60 mil big step in it um, that replicates the surface of the filter here. Then we have to machine a groove into the steel to take, a, take an O-ring. I'm, I'm going to use a 60 by 5 O-ring and we'll glue that into the end housing. Then uh, the, bottom of the, the bottom of it will replicate this lip here on the filter bowl so this seals so um and look that's a job i've had i've had in my mind for bloody ages <coughs> i mean i've even had the steel there for it and it's just something that never ever got done so while i'm in flow meter hydraulic fiddle fart around mode um, with all that um, i've got this out i've actually drawn the thing i've I suppose I could find Justin on the road somewhere and measure his, but I can't even find the bloody part number of the tool. Um, it's, a, it's a flow meter tool for, and it works on the utility series, like the, the Mannheim made tractors, like um, 2030, right up to 3350, 3650, things like that. Yeah, you know, all your 40s, 1640, 2040, 2140. Um, all those tractors in, in you know, 2950 overseas. So it suits all those tractors and it's just a quick way of pressure testing your transmission pump. And, and so two things, I like playing with hydraulics, I like playing with tractors and I like machining. So it's right down the alley really. So, um, but yeah, I can't actually find even a picture of the tool because I thought if I could find the part number again and put it into Google image search, I might find it and someone might have bothered to put the measurements there. but. Um, anyway, the old 1640 out the back, I've taken the filter off, um, I've measured up in with the verniers and I have this old dinged up filter there that I can work out the, you know, the, the filter diameter here. And um, so I've got enough to work with and that's a project I'm going to work with soon because I do like machining and mucking around. So um, yeah, so I'm, I'm just getting my ducks in a row for that. and. Um, once it's done, um, I'm just going to do a quick little video and I'm just going to 
my John Deere 1640 with the front end loader, look, it works great. But yeah, it'll take me 10 minutes to check the transmission part. And I know it's fine, but um, just to do the video to show you can do it quickly. Um, I worked for a company years ago and they had a, um, they had a filter bowl like this and I can't remember, they must have had a fitting inside because it was a homemade, it was a bodgy shit of a thing. But um, like this here, you could actually, um, the transmission pressure would come out here so you could um, block that up, like put a, put a sleeve in there and take your supply out of there, then put your return back in the middle, up into the centre of the sleeve. So like everything, there's bloody dozen ways to skin a cat. That fitting on the edge here, um, when you're playing with these early John Deere tractors, they haven't got much flow. And um, when you put a loader or something like that on them, um, they get chattery, they don't have enough flow. But if you return the, um, the flow from the loader control valve into the filter bowl, it sort of helps regenerate the oil. So you've got your transmission pump oil coming in, you've got your return oil coming in, and it'll, it'll be at a positive pressure because you know, your loader's going down, and it'll be pushing in. And um, so that helps regenerate enough oil to go in here to supply your high low and all that sort of thing. So, but that's a whole nother story. So, so that's what's going on there. Now I've got this done. Um, I've got to find, oh, Bill had a bolt with a nut on it, on this thing, and that thing gives me the shits. So I've got, a, I've got it over here. I've got to find another bolt like that, which I, I will have somewhere, and we'll put the proper bolts back in that. Put that in the flow test kit. This here is just going to be a quick and easy way. Um, sometimes, <clears throat> sometimes with the plugs in the side of the housings, they're Allen key ones, and oh, geez, I've had some tight ones over the years. Um, you got to bash them with a hammer and bash the thing in and get the socket on. But anyway, um, you can return there. But, um, but anyway, so that's what I've chose to do. It's not 100% necessary. There, like I say, there is others, other ways of doing it, but that's going to go in the flow test kit. And um, yeah, I better start cleaning up for the day. So um, I've got to tidy up. Yeah, like I said, the, the floor's a mess and I do want to pressure clean every month if I can. And, um, and that forces me to get the shit up off the floor. Um, you know, the parts I think I'll just put there for the moment. I'll, I'll do that later. And um, yeah, later's months and it's still there. So um, anyway, I'll go handheld. I'll just go for a quick walk. I'll show you where that plug is on the 65. And um, yeah, as Barry says, your time is much appreciated. Um, thanks for stopping by. And yeah, look, we'll catch you all next week, eh? See ya. You can see the 65 here. It's got a nice work bay here now, nice and clean. But um, anyway, we'll see. But when I was talking about the... I'll just get rid of... Some of this stuff, but there's that plate, and when you come across, there's an Allen key head there. You could undo that and flow test out of there, and put your return in here. Another BSP plug. Then, when you come around, see there's your there's your little plate like mine. I've got all the brake parts and instead of putting them away, I thought I'll be using them soon, so I've sat them here in the road. And there's that plug there, so you can do that too, but I just thought in my instance it'd be easy just to pop the pop that off, pop it on, have it have it all plumbed up ready to go, and I'm not I'm not fighting with these little Allen Allen keys. If the tractor's had a bit of work on it over the years, like the quickest way just to do a pressure test on these tractors is just screw that in. I'll take that out, put a fitting there with a gauge on it, and just pull it up the constant pump, and she'll rattle and bang, and that'll give you a um, give you a reading. But and look, I I think I do have a gauge fitting like that, but I just thought, <coughs> pardon me, I just thought I'd go this other way just for I don't know, just because I felt like it. Yeah, um, you can see all the leaves and things on the floor here, and that's just. Like we swept the floor probably midweek, so anyway, it's not looking too bad. The flow meter's over here now, all done. This this second little flow meter's all glued up. I'm yet to calibrate it um, and see. Um, 
and that's where the yellow plate and the new test fitting will go. I just thought it'd be a simple thing. I can just pop that little plate on and away we go. Um, I've been over here with the leaves, leaves down through here. So um, I've been over here with this water pump. It was probably a bit bright. That's a Sparex water pump, and this is an old Bearco one that I took off my gold tractor. Now, I don't reckon this one lasted any more than 40 or 50 hours, and the bearings got noisy. But, <clears throat> but I mean, Ross was here the other day that works for us, and I was giving him some bits and pieces, and we, we got to looking at these pumps, and you can see how thick the casting is here, and this is the Sparex one. Now, this Sparex one, that got returned as a warranty. You can see it's, got, it's had a leak. So... Um, and this one, I thought this one was just noisy, not leaking, but it looks like it probably was leaking by the look of that. So I'm going to pull both of them apart and just see what the difference is between a Bearco and a Sparex. But just when you look at the castings, look how coarse and gritty and grainy that Bearco one is. And look at the Sparex one, how smooth it is in comparison. Now, that, that doesn't tell a big story, but years ago I had a... Um, uh, lift cylinder I bought through Bear and I went to fit it and we f I actually we did fit it and it split like in no time flat and we had a look and um, the original cylinder weighed nine uh, oh, nine pound comes to mind but that wouldn't be right surely um, but yeah the 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 genuine Massey one weighed so much more than the aftermarket one, even though the aftermarket one looked the right size. So, um, yeah, it must have just been made out of junk. So they're there for that. Um, I just want to pull them apart and see the difference because this one was on my gold petrol years ago and I just kept it because I was a bit pissed off that it didn't last that long and um, in hours. But, and I don't understand how it's got so much shit on there. But anyway, that's just how it is. So that's what that's doing there. But I've got the... Where are we? The sun's playing up here. I, I've got. I've been using LP gas and um, and oxygen for the oxy, but um, I'll let the camera reset over here. I think. Um, but now Bunnings have the cheaper cylinders. I'm going to go back to acetylene. It's a bit hotter. And over here, oh yeah, I've got all that tidied up pretty well now. Um, that's pretty good. These fittings here, these are all fittings old Bill had and I've pulled them all apart and you know these were like stacks of five or six over this long so I've pulled them all apart and I've got the bits I need. See there's a, there's a I'm, I'm hunting for these ones, getting all them sorted out and um, seeing how we go with that. So um, I'm nearly finished all that though. I've, I've just put a new hand piece on the bead blaster. So that can go in the scrap. Um, here's the gauges. Now you can see this gauge here. You can see the top there is very, like it's, it's coming off. And that's a 2000 pound one. So, so there's the one I could copy, but I'm not sure, I'm not sure how to do that yet. So yeah, Dave's coming. Oh, well, Dave's got them cut. He showed me a photo. The fuel tank for the pressure cleaner, it's all sealed up. I've got that ready to go. So that's this morning's job. Um, get that on and then I can run through here and clean all this. Um, I've still got a mess over there. And I've got all the hydraulic fittings and all in their proper drawers now. All tagged. All the, all the corks and circlip kits and the big Sparex O-ring kits and all in there now, so that won't be too bad. So anyway, there you go. That's what's going on this week in the shed. And yeah, that's a bit of a closer look at some of that stuff. But anyway, I better stop talking and go and do a bit of work.